Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mang Liang Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Tsongkhong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Torji. Homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. Sumo, Tanjan Katso, all Dhamma Masters, Dhamma Educators, Dhamma Teachers, Dhamma Lecturers, Dhamma Assistants, Directors of Temples and Chapters, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Our participating VIPs today are Taipei Rep to Sweden and Norway, Ambassador Dong Zhou Liao's wife, Dharma Sister Judy, Accountant to Tubida Foundation, Dharma Sister Teresa, PR Director of Tubida School Taiwan Temple, Dharma Brother Fermi Wong. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? First, let's announce for next Sunday, which is March 8th, there will be it is the Parinirvana anniversary of Sakyamuni Buddha, March 3rd, March 8th. And Sunday, 3 p.m., we will perform Sakyamuni Buddha's Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. And Sakyamuni Buddha is the founder of Buddhism, so there's no need to introduce him. The leader and founder of Buddhism and of samsara and all the Buddha Dharma came from him. in this world. So whether you want to become primary supplicants or not, it's up to you. So this is related to uh, the leader of Buddhism, the founder of Buddhism. And he has two mudras, Sakyamuni Buddha's mudras, the inner three mountain mudra or the outer three mountain mudra this is the mudra and the outer three mountain mudras so the index fingers and the pinkies and the thumbs are straight upright and the other two fingers are clasping, either inwardly or outwardly. I'm sorry, the middle fingers, pinkies, middle fingers and thumbs. And this image is endowed with 32 marks. The mantra.
Om Mani Mani Mahamani Sakyamani Soha. That's his heart mantra. And today we perform Padma Kumara, and we all know about him. There's no need to explain too much. And his origins was also extremely sublime and supreme. And one of them, as in Tantric Buddhism, we have the Great Perfection Dharma, which belongs to Nyingmapa, the highest Dharma. And then Mahamudra, that belongs to Kagyuba, the highest Dharma there. And for Sakyapa, it was Lamde. So what I am expounding now, Lamde, is considered the highest Dharma practice in Sakyapa. And in Kalupa, Yamantaka is the highest Dharma there. And so Mahamudra of Kagyupa and Great Perfection or Dokchen of Nyingmapa are very similar to each other. So for this Great Perfection Dharma and Mahamudra Dharma were transmitted by the Adharma Buddha. And the lineage of Mahamudra was from Adharma Buddha to the Pao Yi youth, or precious mind youth. So, and the second lineage was the Pao Yi youth, and Pao Yi youth was also Padma Kumara. So the earliest Padma Kumara was Pao Yi youth and Pao Sang youth. And so Mahamudra that belongs to Kagyupa, their patriarch guru or lineage guru was also Padma Kumara. So therefore, in the Tunghuang Grottoes, there is Padma Kumara in each of, in almost all of the caves. Prior to Grandmaster mentioning about Padma Kumara, nobody ever mentioned him. And after Grandmaster was talking about Padma Kumara, there followed many people talking about Padma Kumara. This is a very interesting. So today, let's continue to talk about Lamde. So it's mentioned here about the four basic marks or symbol. The quote, the five fingers gather and press together. The thumb and ring of fingers perform the ritual, form the victorious body mudra, and the four fingers symbolizes the sky. And for the vase empowerment, the five fingers of the left hand press against each other, gather, and the four finger of the right hand is placed on top of it. The gathered 
fingers symbolize the universal empowerment of the five Buddhas, and the gathering finger symbolizes the Guru's empowerment for a total of six symbols. For secret empowerment, after knowing the cause, during the secret empowerment, place your left thumb and ring finger together like the Indian sign of Dharma origin and use them to get the empowerment item and then place it on top of the tongue. What is this mark for? It is the Adapo Vida from the four Vedas, which is placing the bodhicitta on top of the tongue. Third, the wisdom empowerment. The mark for the third empowerment is the right forefinger as the method of skillful means interlaced with the left forefinger as the wisdom to symbolize the dual execution of methods and wisdom and as the mark of non-leaking bodhicitta. It is called the most victorious body of emptiness and bliss is the undifferentiated mudra. For the fourth empowerment, the mark of the fourth empowerment is the right forefinger points and circles around the sky to symbolize the great bliss dharmakaya is like the sky. These are the four root or basic marks. So the four mudras for the four empowerments this are what it's about. Each of the schools are different. In Sakyapa, the first mudra for the waste empowerment is like this. Gather all the five fingers for your left hand and the right hand Which finger? The forefinger. Yes. So the forefinger of the right hand is placed on top of the vase. This is the symbol for the vase empowerment, which is the first empowerment. And the second empowerment is the secret empowerment. This is the mudra. And the third empowerment, like this, for the wisdom empowerment. It's like this. The fourth empowerment the right forefinger circles toward the sky. The symbol is the great Buddhist Dharmakaya is like the sky. My guru taught me this. The left forefinger the right forefinger. This represents the sky. It's like this, which is the mudra of Vairokana. So this four symbols or marks representing the four empowerments. And the second is the four divisional marks. So divided from this, the court, the five fingers separate, change into the clasped vajra fist, 
raise them to become the Vajra triangular point and the forefinger symbolizes the sky. And for the wrist empowerment, it represents the empowerments common to the five Buddhas. For secret empowerment, it symbolizes that bodhicitta on the tongue are undivided. For the wisdom empowerment, it represents that merging bliss and non-thought, the three of them. And for the fourth empowerment, is the root empower root mark of the fourth empowerment. This is the same as before, it's about the same. So these are all talking about mudras. And the four speech marks during the vis empowerment is using using kala sha a that dwells at the apex and for the secret empowerment is ya lo lawa at the throat chakra for wisdom empowerment i wang wa ya at the um, secret chakra i to represent wisdom the character i the character Wang to represent skillful means and the character Ma to symbolize Mahulaka, the great deed, greed, the great greed, and the character Ya Wa U to symbolize the slow uh, breathing that can appear. And for the fourth empowerment, you use Om Ahom. That are all the body, speech, and mind. That's the mark of the fourth empowerment. And in each of the empowerment, there are some characters to represent it. And by receiving the empowerment 16 times, it can protect against hindrances. Huh? So skillful means and wisdom, t 8 times 8 is 16. 8 times 8 is 64. Or 8 plus 8, the same as 16 protections. All these wordings are very difficult to explain. In the past, the Guru taught how to form the mudras. For this empowerment, it was like this, slightly different from the slamdi in Sakyapa. For the this empowerment, it was like this, sometimes like this, a little bit like the invisible mudra of Mariji Bodhisattva. As I remember, this is for the vase empowerment, the mudra like this. And for the second empowerment, the guru taught me like this. Flowers, the shape of a half-open lotus blossom. This is the symbol of the second empowerment. And the third empowerment they use the sign of Vairokana Buddha. And for the fourth empowerment, forming like a ball, which represents the great perfection. This is what the Guru taught me. 
This is first empowerment. This is the second empowerment. The third empowerment. It's like this. The fourth empowerment is like this. Four mudras, slightly different from what they are talking about in Lamde. And there are many more mudras that Grand Master doesn't dare to form, like the subjugation mudra or the um, exorcism mudra. But nowadays, I don't dare to form it because nowadays people use this sign to insult people. Actually, that was a mudra. I don't know what's happening with this society that now now it's spread all over the world. We use that finger to insult people. I only form the one that's facing down. So it's very strange. We form it like this. I form the one facing or pointing down. So the forefinger and the ring fingers are hooking each other, and then the thumb is pressing on the pinky. This is called the Vajra finger. When you uh, form what make offerings to the gods and girls, you have to chant um, the golden winged birds, uh, all the yaksas and wandering girls, let them be sprinkled with nectar. And then you use this mudra to draw a character home on a cup of water, and then you sprinkle the water in order to make it effective. This is called the Vajra finger, and then if you point it upward, then there would be a subjugation mudra. So this is a mudra that's a little bit difficult to form. And, but uh, this, this way is very easy to form. This is the easier, the simple version. For the subduing Mara mudra. So if there's Mara coming, and you form this mudra and point to the Mara and recite the subduing Mara mantra, then the Mara will run away. So this is a very useful mudra, but nowadays the whole society use it to insult people. And there's another mudra that was taught by my guru, it was like this. And this is also a subduing Mara mudra. This is also a subduing Mara mudra. And if you point to the front, this is a triangular Mara subduing mudra. And if there's Mara coming, then you transport your chi to the fingers. And the Mara would disappear by itself. If Mara is standing right in front of you and you form this mudra, Mara will disappear. If you use 
if you have power and you use this mudra and point to a flying bird in the sky, the bird would fall to the ground. So you form this mudra and chant mantra, the bird will fall down. And you form this mudra and you point to fish swimming in water, the fish will stop. It's like being nailed down, will not be able to continue to move. So the forefathers have done this kind of things. When a bird is flying in the sky and he uses a finger and point at it and it falls. It so mudras also have power. So when you form this mudra, and if you are disturbed by maras, now you know the mudras. This is called the triangular mudra, pointing directly to mara. Then the mara will disappear. So this is what I especially teach you today, a very special teaching. Else, you form the Vajra finger mudra, Vajra mudra, and pointing at him, and then you recite Hom, 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 Pei, or Hom, Hom, Pei, and he would disappear. Now you know. You form this mudra, and you recite Hom, Hom. Or you form this mudra to subdue Mara and you also recite Hom, Hom, Pei. And the Mara will disappear. So it talks about falling onto the both methods and wisdom wise side divided into three stages the early the middle and the ending part so These are all titles that will be explained later. So, guard against the leaking of the light drops and to guard against the six uh, leakings and the two hindrances. I apologize, I missed this whole part. It's talking about the guarding against uh, non-leaking. And Grandmaster is a non-leaking sage. So, in the middle stage, it does talk about guarding against the six leaking.
我们谈到出极限，刚刚解释呢，以以上之处。We're、talking about the initial stage. After receiving instructions from the guru, Oh, it's talking about something very strange here.、Um, it's talking about shadow. What is that? It's actually obstructions. They're talking about the familiar things using strange terms. All of a sudden, they use this character shadow, trying to use a new term. But there's no need to explain it. So, so all the obstructions or hindrances throughout your spiritual cultivation, they could just use the word hindrances, but instead they use shadow, so that you don't know what he's talking about. So all kinds of obstructions and sufferings. Or things that take your life, they are all considered as hindrances. It's talking about when the affinity has come together. My guru also said that whatever causes that you create, then it would result in whatever. Effect, so that's cause and effect. However, if you create a cause, but there's no affinity, then it will not bear fruition. So my guru taught me that your seed. And the seed needs some soil. And water, and fertilizer, and with the sunshine, with all these affinities, then the seed will sprout and grow to become a tree. Then it would become a fruit. So, if you create a cause, but you don't have the affinities or the causes and conditions, then is it is as if the seed is on the cement ground 
on a cement floor. There's no nutrition, nothing. So it's impossible for the seed to bear fruit. So we want to avoid the causes. That's why Grandmaster had said before, whatever things you do, you visualize at the ground there is a lotus blossom and you're standing inside the lotus blossom and the lotus encloses to envelop you. So what does this mean? You're performing this uh, mudra or you're doing this cause that would bear fruition eventually. But when you enclose yourself in a lotus blossom, then you will never get the fruit. Then you're separated from all affinities outside, all conditions outside. So in that situation, there will be no fruit. So only the cause, but no effect. Then that would be called unrecorded. So it's not recorded. So that's the reason. So it's kind of concealed that there would be the best explanation. So in summary, the cause is the preliminary and the affinity is if you meet with the right conditions, then you would bear fruit. Some sentient being or bodhicharo, in their past life, you have created some obstructions. So in this life, when you meet with the six conditions, because in the past life you have created the cause, and in this life you encounter the affinities or conditions, then it can result in the suffering of your body and mind or even the fruition of losing your life. Because in your past life, you have killed lots of beings. So in this life, if you meet your enemies, then you are killed by your enemies because you have created the cause of killing in your past life and in this life you encounter the victim of your deed then you now you encounter you suffer the murder by that enemies However, if you don't encounter him or her, then you don't have the affinity that would result in that friction. So the cost that you created in the past life can also affect your meditation and spiritual experiences. like the clouds that's blocking the sun. So that's hindrances, obstruction. That's what it meant. So in our meditation, when you meditate, you also encounter obstructions. Why? Because when you meditate, 
you will always always encounter a, a woman standing in front of you and the woman is extremely beautiful so that your heart keeps fluttering keeps moving around. and strangely every time I meditate this woman always standing right in front of you and you cannot get rid of her and she always gets your attention if you cannot enter into samadhi so that's a hindrance right and some people when they meditate he would see someone chasing after him with the knife wanting to chop your head off and you're so scared so this kind of hindrance and someone else in meditation and see lots of arrows shot toward him so that he suffer in body and mind and it's impossible for him to enter into meditation so this is affinity from the past life hindrances that obstruct you so you feel suffering in your meditation things that cause suffering in your meditation so that's due to the affinity there's six of them so if you breach the Samaya vow then there would be the shadow of the Samaya and the uh, shadow of ghosts and gods so you're being disturbed by gods and ghosts the shadow of bad friends so you encounter bad friends that influence you the shadow of diet food and drink of course food and drink are different as interesting the red ones would make you uh, get in a f get fire or heat in a heat and the green colored food it's cooling yellow colored uh, food and drink is nutritious the black food black colored food will strengthen the kidneys that's what you said so even foods can affect you it's true some people cannot eat this cannot eat that and some people if they uh, force themselves to eat it they, it can uh, die from it it's called allergy like for Qing whenever she eats Pipa. Pipa. which is loquat. Whenever Fu Qing eats loquat, that her, her esophagus would shrink and then she cannot breathe that's the sign of allergy that's allergy lots of kids are allergic to peanuts that they have to be sent to the hospital and we didn't know and we uh, give her p 
he pa and she could not breathe almost could not hardly breathe just people like that but your dad had no problem eating pipa, eating loquat. He's not scared of eating anything. I eat everything. Only diamonds I don't eat and gold. And also the dusters. Diamonds too expensive, but gold, I do drink gold. You know, they put uh, gold flakes inside the alcohol or Japanese food. They use some gold dust <laughs> on top of food, so we eat them. But of course, we cannot eat a kilogram of gold. So I have no taboo. I eat everything. But nowadays, like Jaden and Jin, it's like Jaden's allergic to peanuts. So that's the shadows of food and drink. So if you eat something that's disagreeable with you, you cannot meditate, then you have to go to the toilet all the time. So the shadow of locations, that's because of geomancy, or like there's negative energy where you live, or due to ghosts inside the house. Of course, that would affect your meditation. And the shadow of crops, what's that? It talks about weather or holidays, the effect of this. So dates also create effects on seasons. So that's why I asked the, His Holiness the 16 Kamapa, what do you practice? And he said, in the morning I practice Tara, Dharma, and at night I practice protectors. So protectors should be practiced at night. You cannot do it upside down. It, if you do Tara practice at night and the protector practice in the morning, then that's not right. So at the daytime, you practice your yidam. At night, you practice your protector. So that's due to time. Obstructions due to time. Hindrances due to time. So, uh, uh, in, in the Dating Information Center, I was asked, what kind of lady do you like? Uh, I don't know. Well, what is the common trait of all the ladies that you have liked? She wanted to get a date. So I kept thinking, and then I discovered I have liked many girls, but the only common trait is that they all don't like me. <laughs> So now they have the dating group or associations. Um, composition. It's this is only meaningless in Chinese. Five two o. Oh. 
三三三三三，无数的三。你看前面一个七，后面全是小三，小三是数不尽的。The number five twenty divided by three, but five twenty means I love you, and three is like a mistress. So it's only meaningful in Chinese. You know, something natural, not quite strange, which is like this. Although you can never eliminate the three or the the third parties, that each third party is independent. So in "I love you" divided by three, three is like the third party or the mistress. So five twenty represents love. And then divide it by three, it's equal one seven three point three 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 three. But I discover that each of the three or the third party is independent, and the the former third always wants to perch the next third. I don't know. You can, in love, you cannot, cannot accept even a grain of sand in your eyes. Tibet is so good because it's okay to have one husband and several wives, or one wife and several husbands. That's how Tibet was. And a poor family, they just marry one wife and being used by six brothers together. So one wife and many husbands, because. They are poor, so they can only get one wife. That's how it was in Tibet. Or the royalties, they have lots of wives. Who was such a jerk to set a law about one? Wife and one husband, and then if you get more than one, then you violate the law. <laughs> Who was that jerk? It's fine in the earlier times. But now, in the republic time, it's not allowed. Then I don't want any republic. Uh, honey, this is my FB and line password. Oh, you have such cold hand. Let me warm it. Oh, you look skinny. Let me take you out to eat. Oh, I have bought some airplane tickets. Let's go on a trip. And here's my credit card. You can use all you want. And uh, and uh, this kind of man only exists in museums. So the husband that you encounter today. Is your shadow or obstructions from your past life? So the wife you, that you encounter in this life is very possibly the shadow from your past life. 
That's the affinity that would obstruct your spiritual cultivation. A man said, before meeting you, my world was black and white. After meeting you, my world has become all black. <laughs> so that's a hindrance. Those are hindrances. A lifeguard saved a woman and then they were dating. And someone asked the lifeguard, so your marriage would must be very romantic because you saved her life. And he replied, after I saved her, she floated and then we got married and now I'm sinking. A wife asked her husband, how come you leave work so late these days? And the husband said, oh, because I'm thinking of promotion. Because in Chinese, uh, promotion or getting a raise sounds like a girl's name. So the wife just kicked him. Women are really hard to please. And Su was not here. This one is talking about wine. Human life is like a glass of wine with all different tastes. So when you're happy, uh, drinking wine is uh, it's pleasing. And when you're sad, it is grieving. So human life uh, is like wine. It's sweet and sour and or tart. And it's also like drinking wine, sometimes awake, sometimes drunken. So just walk your own life. Whether it's bitter or not, you know it. Whether it's uh, suffering or not, you know it yourself. Whether you're awake or drunken, you know it yourself. So as long as they don't create hindrances, that's fine. Something that you've heard before. Xiao Ming made a mistake and his mom asked him to kneel in front of the Guan Yin and repent. And then if Guan Yin uh, forgive you, then you're, s you're relieved. And then when mom turned he her head, he's already sitting there eating. Uh, because, yeah, of course, I told uh, Kuan Yin sister I was wrong. I want to eat now. <laughs> and then Kuan Yin's right hand is forming this okay. <laughs> English is not hard. This is how I learned my English. What is that? It's all uh, pronounced using Chinese characters. <laughs> mother is mother, brother. This is also only meaningful in Chinese. Mouse. <laughs> right? It's closed, right? Cheese. Dance. Oh, 
Police， 呃，请叫警察，叫 Police。Police， 小姐叫 Miss， 知识叫 Pose， 眼睛叫 Eyes。我的英文很 Very good。<laughs> My English is very good. That's how I learned my English using Chinese characters to as the phonetics. Oh, money, pay me home.